Let's go to FLA Live Arena. Katie Engelson standing by with the Lamborghini. Ryan, first, your team has played a lot of hockey these last several days. How much of a relief was it that this one didn't go into overtime? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you, you can say that, but we're, you know, we're well prepared for everything in there. So, you know, we'll go as long as it takes. Your team wins one nothing. What was the strategy, especially in that final frame, to get the win? Yeah, just just battle, battle. Um, you know, obviously proud of our effort. Um, you know, guys, we're, we're laying it all on the line, so that's what you got to do this time of year. And, and you know, again, proud of the guys. Sergey Bobrovsky, once again, extremely impactful. We, so many people talk about his work ethic and what he does off the ice. Just what should people know about your goaltender and the type of work ethic that he does have? Yeah, exactly. You know, I think uh, obviously guys have been talking about it, but, um, you know, this is no surprise for us. Uh, you know, we know he's well capable of this. Like the guys have noted, he, he's, you know, a tremendously hard worker. So um, when you got, get a guy that works that hard, there, there's no doubt that there's payoff. When he's playing the way that he is playing, how much confidence does that give you and your teammates? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's you know, it's it's great. It's it's helpful. Um, you know, at the same time, we don't want to, you know, make him work too hard back there, harder than he has to. But, um, you know, he, he's definitely making some some big timely saves for us. A big win tonight. Your team taking a 3-0 series lead. One win away from a berth in the Stanley Cup final. When you hear that, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Yeah, you know, obviously excited, but, um, you know, at, at the same time, um, you know, we're just taking it day by day. We're going to get a recovery in and, and we're going to come ready to play. You mentioned taking it day by day. What's the biggest key in terms of combating complacency? Yeah, you know, ju just pushing each other. I think we, we have a great group, obviously, you know, great coaches and, and great leadership. So, um, you know, as hard as we're working, as well as we're going, we know that, you know, we can, we can maintain that and even so, you know, bump it up a notch. Brian, thanks so much. Congrats. Thank you, Katie. I am with Panthers forward Colin White, and Colin fans in South Florida have waited 27 years to host an Eastern Conference Finals game. How would you describe the atmosphere in this one? Unreal. Um, I think we have some of the best fans in the league, and um, they definitely showed it tonight, and honestly, all playoffs. Um, they've been huge for us, and um, it was such a fun game tonight. Your team taking a commanding 3-0 series lead, and this was the first game of the series that did not go to overtime. How much of a relief was that? Yeah, it was nice. Uh, you know, I think that was a pretty simple game out there tonight, and, um, you know, we, we played so hard, and, um, you know, it feels good to get that one. You mentioned it being a simple game. What was the strategy? What was the key in that third period to hold on to your one nothing lead? Yeah, uh, I think just playing simple, getting pucks out, high flips, getting it deep. Um, I, I don't think they got many chances. I think we played played pretty strong defensively, and um, you know, losing Barky there for a bit of the game was, uh, you know, I think everyone stepped up tonight, so it was huge. You mentioned losing your captain Sasha Barkov. He goes down with an injury in that first period. What can be said of how you and your teammates rallied together and stepped up in his absence? Yeah, it was huge. I think every guy elevated their game and um, played that much stronger in the D zone. Um, you know, he, he's such a big, big part of our team and, you know, leads our team almost every night. So, um, you know, I think everyone stepped up and it was, it was a fun game. Your goaltender, Sergei Bobrovsky, playing his best hockey of the season. What's impressed you most about what he's been able to do between the pipes game after game? Yeah, he's unreal. Um, such a special player, um, special guy. Um, you can't say enough good things about him. Um, he, he's probably the hardest worker on our team, and um, you know, it is showing right now and um, his dedication. So it, is just, it was a matter of time before he's playing like this. Your team won one away from a berth in the Stanley Cup final, and the journey to get to this point has not been the easiest. You look back to January 1st, you were nine points out of a playoff spot. What's been different about this group this postseason? Yeah, uh, you know, I think we all just love each other. Um, you know, we love playing for each other. Never get too high, too low. Um, you know, we come to the rink with a smile on our face. Um, even even if we lose a game, we were coming to the rink smiling. We know we have to do to get better and um, take it day by day. Colin, thanks so much. Yep, thanks, Katie. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Well, Sam, with the uh, way Bob's playing right now, do you guys feel like you just get one and you'll be in a pretty good spot in most of these games? Um... I mean, no matter what the score is, we're just we're just trying to uh, make it as easy as possible on him. Uh, you know, our game plan doesn't change. He's he's coming up with some big timely stop, stops. What you need when um, there are those breakdowns. So, um, you know, yet again, he's he, he comes up big for us. Back right, George uh, Carter. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, how tough was this game? To, I mean, it was scoreless for the first half of the game. Then you guys had to hold down that one nothing lead. Yeah, it was a gritty game. I mean, uh, both teams played hard, and 
I mean, I got one on the power play there, which is awesome that I came through, and we kind of shut it down, and it, uh, we played well, so it was, it was a grand win. Front left. Hey, Sam, uh, just a thought. I know we've asked you guys about this throughout the playoffs, but the thought process up 3 nothing with the possibility to sweep at home, just does it change at all? Do you guys pay attention to that? No, the only, uh, the, the best we could have done today was, was win one game, and uh, you know, tomorrow's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all about recovery and coming back. And two days we have another opportunity to win one game. That's, that's the way it's been for, for months, and it's not changing anytime soon for us. Front left. Sam, how important are those uh, quick plays off the faceoff against that really fast Carolina power play? Because I know you were involved in both of those power play goals where you had that quick play off the draw. Yeah, well, they, they pressure so much. They're so good at it. They're so smart at it. Uh, you know, it seems the, the quicker you could support, the quicker you could kind of work it out around the net. And, you know, on rebounds, that's what puts a lot of stress on, stress on uh, you know, teams that pressure that much and, and, and really any penalty kills. So that's really the only way you can uh, break down a penalty kill that good. Left side, third row, Andrew. Sam, 22 minutes for you. A lot of extra minutes for a lot of guys without Barkov in the lineup. Uh, can you, you talk about how everyone really stepped up without him for most of the game? You know, well, the most important thing was was no one felt and, and like they had to change their game and, and, and no one did. Everyone tried to execute the same game plan. Um, you know, and we really liked our third. Uh, you know, it might have been on the shot clock. We didn't have many, but, you know, I really liked our pace. We weren't sitting back. So, you know, that's, that's the way you're going to have to win games uh, at this time of the year. Front right. Carter, just the whole playoff run. Sergey's been standing on his head. Another big game for him tonight with a shutout. Just seeing him do it night in and night out, just how does it get you guys going? Yeah, I mean, when he's, uh, we have so much confidence with him back there. And I mean, yeah, it seems like every day it's, he's making another huge save and changing momentum and helping our team win games. I mean, he's so important back there. He's so calm. And I mean, he takes it one hit at a time as well. And I mean, uh, he's our backbone and our best player. So, I mean, uh, we just let him be. Take a few more questions on the right side, second row. Yeah, Sam, since uh, we have one goal to talk about tonight, can you sh t take us through what you what you saw and, and then obviously right off the power play? Yeah, I, you know, it, it came to Chucky on, on the half wall there. Uh, you know, I was just trying to find a soft area in the middle and, um, you know, he, he showed some great poise to be able to wait for it to open up. And, uh, you know, Benny did a good job of uh, screening the goalie, so uh, it made it easy on me. George, did you have a question back there? No. No? All right. There are no more questions. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Um, talking to the guys, uh, they talked about... Bar Mitzvah. His neighbor had a... Yeah, that's what we'll go with. Bar Mitzvah. <laughs> and he didn't want to disappoint the kids. Is that upper or lower? The Bar Mitzvah? Yeah. It's on two floors. It's on both floors. It's a big one. Lots um, of kids. Talking to the guys, though, they said, you know, obviously it's tough without Barky, but no one felt like they had to replace Barky. Everyone just felt like they had to kind of step up their own game. Yeah, just how it, impressed with you with how they kind of shared the load tonight? It's a – so the, the, the Barkos of the world on each team, right, the dominant player, it's, it's actually so much more difficult to lose them in-game early. Um, then at, le at least you, you'll have your 12 forwards in and – you kind of prep mentally for the way the game is going to go, but there were a bunch of guys that, you know, loosed around and coming into the middle. Extra minutes on to Chuck and Bennett in their game. Um, but then uh, not just the forwards, right? You've got, you know, Mark Stahl was just so good tonight. And then, of course, Sergey understanding it. He was going to see some pucks tonight. After that, he's power play, penalty kill, regular shift. Just face-offs alone, the shift between the first and second period and the, and the face-off wins, that had a whole lot to do with some of the territorial advantage that they had on us. Um, so it was a really good, gritty win, right? We got a lot of blocked shots tonight. We, we blocked an awful lot of shots, and I thought maybe the best stretch of hockey we had was probably in the last six minutes. Back right, George. Don't think he got challenged a whole lot, but it's a good thing Bobrovsky didn't have to go anywhere, right? I mean, this guy, I mean, he hasn't given up a, he's given up one goal since the third period of game one. What, have you seen a goalie in the postseason that you've coached go on a run like this? I think you'll find it's almost all of the four guys left. I mean, it's, it's a, a piece of how teams get to, to the final four. 
that you'll you'll get a player and, and you know we're coming in a wild card seat it's almost uh requisite for those teams to get to where they are that their goaltender comes up and uh, has, a spe- has a special time of year if you have a question please raise your hand left side second row we've talked a lot throughout this playoff run about playing those kind of games that you talked about from the very start of the year winning this is one nothing i don't think it could be more of, of one of those just right. the you, way you guys right. you mentioned the block shot it feels like you guys are like cleaning up rebounds really well just do, do you feel like kind of everything you you Work well, on in the regular season paying off right now. I, I feel that we we had to learn so many lessons to get to where we are today, and and even with everybody in our lineup, the Boston series kind of taught you all those how uh, the small grinding details, regardless of edge of play or if the other teams get an action on you, whatever it is, you just stay kind of in that moment. And it's the, it, all the cliches. They're the cliches because they're just true. Next shift. Next shift. It doesn't matter what happened in the last one grind the next one standing up here on the left Emily. when you have a goaltender playing the way Rovsky is how does that impact both how you are coaching a game and how you are experiencing it the game it wouldn't change much for me from a coaching point of view like we're, we're to take the theory to the extreme at no point we would say hey nobody has to come back in our end Bob's got it right like we, we have to but there is a different feeling always on the bench when you get a guy that's just so strong in the net. Um, more for the defenseman than anything else, right? They start to they start to feel where the puck's going to come off him. If he doesn't stop it and he doesn't eat it, they get a sense of where the puck's going to go because there's a consistency to how he's moving in the net and where the pucks are coming off him, and it, and it lets those guys dial in. We'll take two more questions, front left. Paul, we've talked a lot throughout the year about what you guys went through, whether it was injuries, illnesses, the schedule. Um, and then to this point, we've talked to you about how everything's starting to click in the, play- in the playoffs. Do you have a, maybe a feeling of pride or you know, what is the feeling when you see everything that you've been preaching for the last seven well, months coming together? If, if I answer the question the way the last part of your question, it's like I'm going to take ownership of it, and I, and I wouldn't. What I would say is, I've said this before, of a great sense of pride being associated with them. The, the players run this room now, right? What they've got going on in that room. Yeah, well, the coaches do some things, but this is the players time of year and then the they're not looking behind the bench for answers in this game. They know what the answers are and they're applying them themselves. Um, but I do enjoy being a part of it because they're a fun bunch of guys and, and, they, and they grind hard. Um, we, we had we, we got forced into that game in January and certainly in the back half of January. That that schedule was the only way we were surviving that at that time. Sergey's injured. We went a long stretch of games with Bennett and Barkoff out of our lineup. You're only surviving that if if the grind becomes who you are. And this game would be, you know, they, they had action. They had the territorial advantage, the shot advantage. I mean, the, the areas that we had the advantage of was, was probably clearing that front and uh, and blocking shots. Those would be the two stats that we like the most. Both of those are filthy hard things, and they seem to enjoy it. Last question, front left. Uh, two, Los Serenin had to jump off the wing there and play some yeah. big minutes down the middle. I mean, what does that say about both his high, uh, hockey IQ and his versatility be, to be able to play those heavy defensive minutes? Yeah, over the course of the year, and that, that, that goes back to sometimes the adversity of face is easily the best training ground. That just happened right here. And, you know, still one of the best regular season games that we played this year was in Tampa coming off the all-star break and, and we had to win felt like you know the next 15 he and Lundell were one and two and he had come off the wing to do that he's played all three uh, left wing positions and at least two of the center ice holes he's filled and played very well so you know it's such a good line now with with Lusterine and Lundell and Reinhardt three penalty killers three guys with hands three guys can make plays uh, but we needed him to come to the middle and he was soul positionally and physically strong that, that that's a big big part of the story thank you for your time all right everybody go home